Hello, how are you? Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to download, install, and perform initial configurations in the new version 5 of Isabel PBX. The first thing we need to do is download and install Isabel 5. Okay, let's go to our browser and type in Isabel 5. In this case, I'm using Microsoft's Age browser. You may be using another browser. I'm typing Isabel 5 here and you'll see that the first link appears, Isabel Project, which is the official Isabel website. If we click here, it will automatically take us to the official Isabel website, isabel.org, here on this button that says Download Isabel. Let's click and see that it takes us here to this server to be able to download Isabel. Here we can see the name, see that it's Isabel 5. Okay. What we have to do here is wait and you'll see that the download automatically starts. Very well, I'm going to cancel this download because I already have Isabel downloaded. I want to thank all the people who have become members of the channel and have supported me in this way. Remember that in the description of this video there is a link where you can register to become a member of this channel. What I'm going to do is go to my virtual box here and I'm going to create a new machine. You can see that I already have Isabel installed here, but I'm going to show you how to do the installation which is really not that difficult either. Let's go to each new machine. Let's create a new machine. In this case, I'm going to put Isabel here, test. And here I'm going to choose the ISO. Here I have it. The ISO of Isabel 5. Here I'm going to click on this button that says skip unattended installation and I'm simply going to click next here. Here I'm going to leave the RAM at 2 gigabytes. The hard drive, yes, I'm only going to leave it at 10 gigabytes. Well, you can leave it at 20 gigabytes if you want, right? Or increase it to 50, 60. Next. And we're done. That's it. We've already created the machine. Now we're going to configure this machine. The only configuration we're going to do is at the rec level. Let's go here to rec and the NAC. We're going to change the adapter to a bridge adapter. You should automatically see your rec adapter here. Okay, if you're connected via Wi-Fi, you should see the Wi-Fi adapter here, or if you're connected via cable, your Ethernet or Internet adapter. If you want, you can break it down here to see all the adapters and there you can choose the adapter, in this case, the one you're connected to your Wi-Fi router with. In this case, I'm going to leave it like this. Accept. And now we're going to start the machine. Okay, we're going to choose this first option here. We're going to choose that first option. Okay, here we're going to choose the language and in this case, the country that corresponds to you. Okay, here we're mainly going to configure the keyboard. We're going to choose the first option here. We're going to choose this option. And now we're going to click over here on done and that's it. We'll have the keyboard configured. Very good. Now what we're going to do is configure the root password here, which is this one here. Enter. And here I'm going to set a password. We click on the button that says done. We're setting up a user, which is this tab down here. That's this tab here. User creation. And there we're going to create our user. Very good. Here I'm going to check this option. I'm going to keep scrolling down until I get to the password. I'm going to set a password. I'm going to go to the next one to confirm it and that's it. Then, I'm going to go over there to the button and save that configuration. And voila, we'll have this configured here. Now what we're going to do is click on this button that says start installation and there the installation will start. This installation really takes quite a while, so be patient because it actually takes much longer than previous versions of Isabel. Okay, after a few minutes the installation is finished. Now let's do some configurations, in this case for the password as requested here, for MariaDB. In this case, I'm going to enter it. We click on accept. We repeat the password. Accept. Let's wait for it to configure. Okay, now it's not asking for the password for Isabel PBX. In this case, this is for, I think it's for the web interface. Yes, it's for the web interface. I'm going to enter the password here. Okay. Here we're simply going to click on yes to continue. Let's confirm the password again and wait. Okay, here we can choose the language although we can also make that change from the web interface. In this case, I'm going to leave it in English. Except, something I want to clarify for everyone is that for a moment when I was installing the telephone exchange, I had left this option as default, which is to use Chan JPSIC. However, I noticed that there were too many registration problems with the soft phones I was using, in this case with Cyper. For this reason, on this occasion, 
I'm going to leave the option to use Chan SP checked and I'm going to click accept. However, you can also try it, okay? You can create two machines and configure one from here, from the configuration panel to use PJSIC and the other with Chanik to then check if you have any registration problems with the soft phones or with any IP phones. Okay, here we are practically finishing the entire installation process. Very good, this would be the last step, enter. And you can see that there we can now access our portal. I'm simply going to enter the username that Isabel had assigned here. Enter. With the password, since I had previously configured this virtual machine with a bridge adapter, you see that I have already given it an IP address within my network segment of my Wi-Fi. Well, now let's go to the browser. Very good. Here I can now access with 192,168,250,111, which was the address you see. I had given it my router. There you have it. Let's click here on advanced and go to continue. Some people have had some issues or difficulties configuring extensions in this new version of Isabel 5. However, we are now going to configure some extensions and I will show you what changes have occurred in this new version of Isabel. I am going to put admin here. I have it in capital letters, admin. Okay, I am not going to make any registrations here for now. I am going to close here. Well, as you can see, the panel has really been the same as in other versions of Isabel. However, look, I am going to go here to where it says PBX and I am going to go to the PBX configuration. And remember that before the configuration menu appeared here. Notice that now absolutely nothing appears here. Why? Because now we have to click on these three lines here. Go here to extensions to configure the extensions. Very good. This window that appears here is a floating window. We can click on this arrow and hide it. In this case, see how the SICK or the SICK protocol for port 5060 appears by default. In this case, I'm going to choose this port. We can choose any here, even PJSIC. I'm going to choose this port. Let's click here in Summic and here we'll start creating the extension. I'm mainly going to create the extension 7001. I'm going to name it Michelle Lopez. Okay. Here's the password, the secret. I'm going to give it a password and that's it. We can configure these other parameters in more detail, but obviously we have to have a boss mail configured. The options to, uh, obviously record all calls. What we mainly want is to verify if the switchboard is working properly. Zooming. We apply the changes here. See how it says apply changes to the configuration. And perfect. Now, where do we see our extension? We don't see anything here at all. That floating window that I had already indicated, see that it's here, there where the extensions are displayed. Here you can see that I already have an extension. I'm going to create another one. If we want to create another extension, we can go here again, click here on Zoomic, and obviously choose the same signaling protocol. I'm going to create 7002. I'm just going to name this one Mikelly. Here I'm going to add a password, the same password. And that's it. Let's go to the end. Zoom it. We apply the changes and there you can see that I already have the two extensions. Now we're going to configure these two extensions in the SAR to verify if the control panel is working properly. Okay, here I have Sipper. I'm going to continue with a free account. This is an Eliper for Windows. I'm going to configure the other one on a cell phone. Here I already had an account registered. In this case, I'm going to delete this account. I'm going to click here on this account configuration wheel. And here I'm simply going to enter this account and I'm going to click here on this little trash can. We delete the account. Now, yes, the first one, 701, I'm going to configure it here. 7001 at the address of my switchboard, which is 192.1. 168.250.111 We put a colon and we're going to put the port, which is 5060. We're going to put the password, the password that I had already configured when we created the extensions. 
Here we simply verify that this is the domain of our server or the IP address of our server with the indicated port number. Next. Obviously, we don't check this. And there you can see that the first extension has already been registered. And now we would have the extension ready. Let's close here. Now I'm going to do the same on the cell phone. I'm going to put the extension 7002 here. We then put 7002 at the IP address of the server, which is 192.168.250.111, a colon, and we put the port, which is 5060. We put the password. Let's verify. Yes, that same login. Okay, we confirm here. Next, use. Let's jump in and here you can see that it has been registered successfully. Finish. Allow. Very good. Now we are going to make a call. I am going to make a call to 7001. 7001. Okay. There you can see how the call is already being made. I am going to hang up. Now from here I am going to make a call to 7002. There it is. And now our switchboard is working completely normally. In the next videos we are going to start making configurations in this new version 5 of Isabel PBX. See you in the next one.